What's up guys? Shamus11. Um, and at the moment going on is Gamescom 2015. I had no intention of doing a video on this, but um, yesterday, uh, with today being the 5th, so yesterday was the 4th of August, um, Xbox came out and did their big presentation and it kind of blew me away. I was absolutely amazed by it. They said um, before E3 that they were only going to do half their content um, to save some for Gamescom and they didn't lie. Um, they absolutely smashed it. So as always, you're going to have to put up with me looking up and down because I had to make a lot of notes. Um, I actually ended up watching the whole conference twice because it was brilliant. Um, so um, Phil Spencer came out and, and opened everything. Uh, I, I love listening to him. I just trust everything he says. Um, he's so good at, at, at doing public speaking as well, so it's, it's quite enjoyable to watch. Um, and he announced, of course, that Rare Replay was out. Um, 30th anniversary of Rare Games. Um, and 30 games in one disc, as I've mentioned I had countless times, I think, in, in videos now. Uh, I think quite a few of us have got it. Uh, it it's a bargain for 20 quid. Um, we then saw Quantum Break. Um, now, Quantum Break is a, is a bit of a, a weird one. We were also shown, um, or, uh, Sean Ashmore, the actor from X-Men, was brought out. And um, they announced that uh, Quantum Break is going to be a TV show and a game in one. It's an interactive TV show, um, and there's quite a few actors that I recognise from various shows uh, in it. Um, the game we saw was kind of time stopping and leaping forward and backwards, and we saw a little bit of the actual gameplay of uh, him doing some shooting and some hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, I'll be honest with you, it looks lovely, but it also looks really confusing. Um, I'm sure it will all make much more sense when you're actually playing it but I sat there thinking oh my god how on earth are you ever going to do this he was switching time and then you know speeding it forward and taking cover and it's all third person but it looks it looked absolutely gorgeous um and they announced that that is going to be coming out April 5th 2016 um and of course is a, a Xbox one exclusive um next up we saw Crackdown 3 now the single player uh, we just saw a, a trailer. We, we didn't see any actual gameplay. But then we saw pre-alpha footage of the multiplayer, um, which showed uh, an entirely destructible city. We saw like a skyscraper fall down onto another building, which then crumbled straight down, and then bits of that pinged off and were hitting other buildings. Uh, and they made a, a big thing out of that, that there is a, a multiplayer destructible city. Um, and it's not about the guns, it's about how you use the city. Um I will probably get cracked down three. I had one and two. I, I played one uh, and absolutely loved it. Two I was really disappointed with for some reason. So um, fingers crossed they, they pull it back with three in, in, in my opinion. But a lot of you love cracked down two. So uh, it's all good. Um, we then saw Scalebound, which for me was the standout game of the whole thing. Um, Scalebound is a third person RPG of old mixed with new. Um, we had him, he was wearing these headphones, we then, when he went into battle, he put them on and we had this, you know, this modern kind of electro um, dance track going on. Uh, and he had this giant dragon that was his friend. He had one scaly arm that, you know, was, uh, I guess, his link to his, his dragon. Um, we saw him ordering the dragon around, uh, taking out these kind of defences and while he used a, a, a fire bow and his sword to take out troops, which looked really, really cool. And then once everyone was clear, they said, oh, oh it looks like we've, we've uh, been too noisy and woken up uh, the beast. And uh, this giant mantis that was the size of the dragon came out and it showed them uh, fighting together. And then he took on this, the, the guy took on like this um, ultra form and had his entire body was covered in this armor and did all these attacks. And it looked brilliant. To me, it looks like a Final Fantasy game. I kept thinking that it was, you know, one of uh, Ifrit or Shiva or, or Bahamut or someone like that following them around. Um, and really should have been where the Final Fantasy games went to me. That's how it looked. We saw him kicking open a chest as well, a loot chest. Um, it looked absolutely brilliant. Um, it, it was all gameplay uh, and, and it looked fantastic. Uh, it also said at the end there's going to be four player co op. And again, it's an Xbox One exclusive. We then kind of we were switching between hardware and software presentations. We then went on for the first hardware kind of announcement um, where they announced there will be full DVR available for Xbox. Um, as long as you have um, your Xbox set to instant on, you can record at any time. Uh, what's really cool is you can stream that information to any Windows 10 device you have in your home. So uh, any um, pad, phone, uh, PC, laptop, 
Um, you can download the shows to watch offline at a later date. Um, you can schedule it from anywhere, so you can be on your phone using the app. You can schedule stuff to record, and your Xbox One will record it. Um, and there's no subscription fees, and it's out in 2016. Now, how this works, I don't know. What's going to be available, I don't know. They show pictures of um, how I met your mother, and um, I can't remember now. Some some slightly older. Uh, there was two and a half men. There were Simpsons on there. Um, so I don't know if it's going to replace over here in the UK Sky. Um, I, I doubt it, but um, it, it, it looks you know, really quite promising. Um, he then went on to show that there is going to be a new chat pad available. Um, it's going to have the audio slot. It has two programmable keys, X1 and X2, um, that you can set for whatever you want. Um, it will work with all Windows 10 and Xbox uh, peripherals. Um, and it has what's quite cool is it has the um, screenshot and Xbox record now. So I think the last 30 seconds uh, are just buttons you, you can press, which is much quicker. Um, I know a lot of you say that that's not needed, um, but a lot of you don't have family. Um, as in, you're gaming on your own in your rooms, you can be as loud as you want with your Kinect. Um, for me personally, once kind of everyone's gone to bed, I play games late at night. Um, having those buttons to be able to do that quietly is, is brilliant. Um, I don't have a um, keyboard I can plug in or a wireless one I can use um, with my Xbox One. So being able to type in codes and things like that is really useful. I know people are going to say you can do that with Smart Glass. Well, if you try and enter a code on Smart Glass, um, it constantly brings you in and out. You can't look at the code and type it in. Um, so for me, this is this is ideal. Um, we then were told that uh, from November 2015 um, there will be over 100 games available on uh, backwards compatibility and it will be available to all, not just us preview members. Um, we also got told that all games with gold coming out on 360 will be backwards compatible. Um, so you can play um, all the games with gold on Xbox One and Xbox 360 on your Xbox One. Now, a lot of people are confused by this. The way you have to do it, the games are registered to your account. Your account doesn't live on your Xbox anymore. It lives up in the cloud. Um, so what you have to do is you go on xbox.com, you go onto the marketplace there, and you buy your 360 games that are backwards compatible. That then is saved onto your account. Then when you turn your Xbox One on, it's available to download on backwards compatibility. So um, the games with gold... Uh, as things stand at the moment, won't be available um, outright just to download. You will have to go on Xbox.com to select that title. You'll have to purchase it, but it will say uh, total cost naught. You then click on that. It then says it's available to download, and you don't need a 360. You can just have your Xbox One and do it. That's how you do it at the moment. Um, however, they also announced that the new user interface, essentially uh, Windows 10, is coming to Xbox One in November as well, so it'll probably all tie in together, so there may well be a whole new tab and option. Um, if you haven't already checked out the new interface, it's completely different. It doesn't look like Windows 10. It's got those little drop-down menus, and it, it, it's it completely and utterly different to how the Xbox One interface looks at the moment. Uh, we then went on to Killer Instinct, uh, March 2016, Season 3. We saw one of the characters from Battletoads is available in it, which was the animation on it was fantastic. Um, we then had a whole section on ID at Xbox. Um, Bloodstained was the first one to be shown. Um, the guy, I can't remember his name, Japanese guy, uh, who did one of the Castlevania games, um, which I thought was quite a big coup, um, he said on Kickstarter they got $5.5 million, which is pretty impressive for this game. It's coming exclusively to Xbox One. Um, we then saw um, City Skylines, uh, which is coming to uh, Xbox One first within a year. Now, this really excited me because um, I've been watching Sips um, play City Skylines on PC, um, and it looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. We then heard about uh, Team 17. They're doing Beyond Eyes. Um, a new, uh, the new Escapist Walking Dead game, uh, and Ukulele, which I've backed on Kickstarter. So um, they're behind all of them, as well as bringing us Worms WMD. So uh, there's plenty of, uh, of supports. We then saw um, one of the guys from who developed Monkey Island came out uh, to announce that they're doing uh, a game called Thimbleweed Park, which... Um, is great for us older gamers. It's a point-and-click game, and it's all done in pixel art. 
and it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, again, that's coming first to Xbox. We then heard that Ark, Ark uh, is uh, fantastic. It's kind of a mix of, uh, crikey, everything. Massively multiplayer, survival games, uh, Minecraft building kind of uh, things, uh, and of course dinosaurs and various other monsters. Um, that is coming first to Xbox One again. Um, it will be on the preview scheme um, this winter and out next year. So that's absolutely superb. And then we saw quite a long trailer for a game called We Happy Few, which again is first on Xbox One uh, on the preview. It's coming out this year and it looks ridiculously spooky and scary. Um, we then had another tech demo. We saw DirectX 12 and how that can um, do things. We saw a woman basically, well we saw a um, kind of this fantasy world zooming in and out. Then we saw a woman and we saw her coat and it was all shiny and had feathers ruffling. We saw the dirt on her skin. Um, there was a puddle with kind of different times of day and the lighting on it and uh, her expressions. We saw close up on her eye and it, it did look amazing, um, but it was a tech demo. Um, however, you know, I remember when they showed um, the cars from Stunt Ra Race FX as a tech demo on the SNES and everybody said making a 3D wire game is impossible. And of course we have 3D everything now. So, uh, you yeah, know, it's great to see. Uh, we then had a big thing about um, uh, PC and Xbox One cross-play and cross-buy on, on selected titles such as Fable. Um, if you buy it on the PC version, you can also get the Xbox One version and vice versa. Um, you can also do cross-play, so you can play PC to PC, PC to Xbox One, um, and, and being able to stream Xbox One games on your PC, this, that, and the other. We then saw a guy from Mohang who, bless him, was the most nervous person out of all of them. Um, he babbled on about Windows 10 Beta and then said about a game called Cobalt. Uh, then we saw a little video. I don't really know what Cobalt is. It looked like a 2D uh, kind of, I don't know, shooting, diggy... I don't know. I really don't know. Um, didn't rate that at all. We then saw, uh, excuse me, we then saw Dark Souls 3, where everything was on fire. There was a big thing about fire. Um, huge, great big monsters. I've not been into the Dark Souls things, but the people that are on my Twitter have been absolutely mental, so that looked great. We then saw Homefront. Um, we saw a bike. We saw everything being shiny. We saw him using a remote control car to blow up stuff. It kind of looked like an open world thing as well from the map we saw. Um, it looked all very promising, but the previous Homefront I just hated so much. So I was a bit sceptical. Uh, FIFA 16 came on next. Uh, pff, what's the point? Don't bother FIFA. Uh, they literally mentioned that there's 60 new Ultimate people, uh, uh, sorry, Legends for the um, uh, Ultimate team and a new way of dealing with chemistry. Um, we then heard that EA Access get it early and you get 10% off. That's not news. Um, completely pointless. We didn't see anything being played. They've even stopped trying to lie about this emotions and new touches, and which was good, but don't bother showing anything. Um, we then saw Halo 5, which is going to be announced on the 27th. Sorry, it was announced. It's going to be out on the 27th of October. That's from today. That's 84 days away, which is absolutely fantastic. We saw a multiplayer match, which looked uh, fantastic. What I like about Halo when it um, new ones come out is that they're just more maps and, and shinier graphics. They don't try and do a Call of Duty and rejuvenate everything. They just get a winning formula and stick with it, and it looks really good. I made mean, a big thing about being able to throw the flag and dash, which didn't excite me, but the gameplay looked great. Um, we saw very interesting. Interesting. We saw an American shoutcaster, as I've learned they're called, uh, who was so typically over the top American. And then we had a, uh, uh, it's Richard Sim Sims, his, his nickname was his surname, original that, uh, who was from Yorkshire, and it was just bizarre, but there we go. Uh, we then saw Just Cause 3, which looked absolutely August. Just Cause 3 is out on December the 1st. Everything exploded. You could use your grapple hook on everything. We saw him using his grappling hook on the side of a building, firing an RPG. It looked brilliant. Um, if you buy Just Cause 3, you get Just Cause 2 for free as well, which is brilliant. We then saw the gorgeous Forza 6. It's the 10th anniversary of Forza. It's out 15th of September. It's a driving game. You drive around. It's the most driviest driver ever. The cars are more carrier than ever, and the tracks are trackier than ever. That's pretty much all they said, but it does look amazing. Uh, then we saw a big thing about Tomb Raider. We saw a self, uh, stealth section. We saw a swimming through water, sneaking up on people. We saw her using firing two arrows to hit two people at once uh, from her bow. I don't know how that works, but that looked pretty cool. Um, we saw um, they kept going on about how it's guerrilla combat, so you can use stealth and, and aggression to your advantage. It's out November 13th. It's out first on Xbox One, but I look at it for a year. Um, and mo most importantly, we saw tombs. We saw a climbing. We saw a, 
um, going through tiny little narrow areas, things exploding. It looked absolutely brilliant. And then Big P came back on again to talk about, Phil Spencer talks about how it's our vision, how they're all about uh, gamers connecting. And then it ended bringing out Bonnie from um, 343 Studios. And she said that in fall 2016, we will be seeing Halo Wars 2. And that was the big shock announcement at the end. So um, overall, they absolutely smashed it. Um, it's all available on YouTube. Um, if you go on Xbox official channel, uh, you can watch the whole conference there. Um, but that's just a quick what, 15 minutes it's taken just to get through all the points quickly. Um, I was absolutely blown away by it. Uh, it was a great job by everybody involved. All the speakers were pretty good, uh, except the guy who, when the auto queue failed, he just went, oh, sorry. Um, but yeah, there was no Jason Derulo, which made me quite upset from E3 when he ruined it. But there we go. Little rundown. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Leave me a comment below. What was your favourite game? For me, Scalebound is the one that I'm most looking forward to. Um, I know a couple of you aren't interested at all because you're not into RPGs, which is fair enough. So um, leave me a comment. Come find me on Twitter. Tell me there at Shambles11. Thank you ever so much for watching. Till next time.